In today's climate, nothing will make you a more accurate or confident shooter than Crimson Trace laser sighting systems. Get the immediate, decisive advantage of the world's only grip-integrated laser sights today. Shoot better. Stay safer. Crimson Trace. Lock and load. It's time to load up on some intellectual ammunition with Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. It doesn't matter if you learn to shoot with Daniel Boone or you're brand new. You're welcome here. This is the original national talk show about guns. And Tom Gresham is your guide through the maze of ballistics and politics. So grab your phone and call in right now. 866-825-5486. Or just dial 1-TOM-TALK-GUN. Now, here's Tom. Today on Gun Talk, should you intervene when you see someone being attacked? A good guy in Las Vegas did and was killed by the murderer's accomplice. Trainer and author Masad Ayoub joins Tom to talk about it. Plus, the massive economic impact of hunting and target shooting in America. We're talking billions of dollars and a monster giveaway of a great rifle and the hottest new caliber ready to go. It could be yours. All that and your calls. Dial 1 Tom Talk Gun to be on the air. Now, here's Tom. Oh, man, I can hardly get... I'm just saying I'm so ready to do this. I just can hardly wait. We have a great show for you today. Hey, I'm Tom Gresham. It's Gun Talk. We are giving away, like, one of the coolest packages you've ever seen, you've ever heard of. I only wish I could qualify to get in on this deal. I would enter for a chance to win. We're also going to be talking with Masada Yub about uh, Joseph Wilcox, the Good Samaritan in Las Vegas who got involved, inserted himself, he intervened, got murdered by one of the two murderers, uh, by an accomplice, somebody who had slipped in behind him, this young woman. So we're going to explore the, the question, should you get involved? Should you intervene? And maybe more importantly, how or what do we learn from this? We'll be talking about that also. We talk about the incredible impact of shooting and hunting on America's economy. We have some real numbers for you, and we'll be talking with uh, Melissa Bachman, a TV host, about her show and about hunting in general. Uh, we'll have an awful lot of things going on. We'll also look for your range reports. We've got uh, some of those lined up. We've got people calling in all over the place. Uh, and, of course, we'll be talking about the story. In fact, we got Kyle calling in right now. We'll get to, in fact, let's do this. Before we even get to our guest, let's get Kyle on here because from Mary's, Maryville, Tennessee, because we might as well get this story out there in the front, line three. Hey, Kyle. Hey, Tom. I was listening to uh, this week uh, with George Stephanopoulos on uh, ABC Today, and they were talking about the open carry debate, and they listed several companies uh Target being one of them. Target specifically uh, has came out and asked uh, their people, customers who carry, uh, to uh, please leave their guns at home or leave them in their car. Anyway, not bring them in the store. And mm-hmm. I myself uh, have a Target debit card, and I get my prescriptions filled there. And I will be canceling all my business since I am uh, uninvited to their store now. All right, before you do that, Kyle, there's more to this story than you know. And I've been trying to tell people, don't cut up your Target cards yet. Pay attention to what actually happened here. First, we had the knuckleheads. Yeah, it's like the knuckleheads of open carry. They're carrying their ARs and their AKs into stores, carrying them into Target, scared the the patrons. They're like the poster children for the anti-gun guys. And so the Moms Demand Action got a hold of this, and they did what they do only so well. They went to Target, and they extorted, yes, I said extorted from them this statement. What did Target do, though? Think about it. Target has not banned guns. Target has not put up any no-guns signs. What the Moms Demand Action crew did is they forced Target to make a public statement. And look at the statement carefully. It doesn't say we're going to require that you leave your guns at home. It didn't say we're going to put up no gun signs. They they didn't say we're going to make it illegal for you to bring them in. What they did is they said, we're going to make a statement to get you knuckle-headed, mom's demand action, crazy people off of our backs. So we're going to stand up and say these words, and then you will declare victory, and then we can all go on, and people can keep carrying our stores just as they always have. 
So they made a very careful statement. They said, we request that you leave your guns at home. Now, they followed it up by saying, but if you do bring your guns here, we're not going to do anything about it, and we're not going to ask you to leave. So what happened here? Well, first of all, we, some people on our side, gave them another PR victory. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Yes, I say that again, stupid. This, I mean, I cannot believe there are still people who tell me, well, you know, this is what we're doing in Texas because we're going to get the right to open carry, and this is the way we're going to do it. No, you're not. You're, you're, you're being dumb beyond belief. You're causing us losses in the PR world. But specifically, whether it's Target or it is Starbucks or it's Home Depot or whoever it is, all they're doing is making a public statement and saying, you know, they're making noises over here, but what they're actually saying is, we're having to stand here and take this public beating because the Moms Demand Action, the Bloomberg, Michael Bloomberg gun banning group, has jumped on us through social media and said they'll never buy another product in Target if we don't stand up and say this. So we're going to stand up and say this to get them off our backs, but wink, 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 go ahead and carry. It's cool. It wasn't a problem before. We know it wasn't a problem. We know it's not a problem. We know it's not going to be a problem. And then they actually, I love this part, Kyle, they actually ended up saying, and yeah, if you carry in the store, we're not going to say anything to you about it. So before everybody gets all riled up about this, understand this wasn't a gun ban. This was just a, a PR move. Well, I, I'm glad you I'm glad you straightened me out on that. I, I thought they were kind of coming across as, well, you're not, well, you know, kind of like putting a sign on the door. No, 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 no. That's what, that, and that's, and that's why, and I look, I'm glad you called because it gives me a chance to straighten this out because I've had several people, they just aren't paying attention to what's going on. They, oh, Target's gone anti-gun. No, they haven't. They've gone anti-moms demand action. They, they've gone anti-gun banner on this. They've said, get these crazies off our backs. Yes, we will say these, these words. To, to get these people to leave us the H alone. And so they said the words, and now the Moms Demand Action crazies out there are saying, oh, lovely, we'll go back and shop at Target. And the rest of us are going, hey, we're going to continue to carry a Target just like we always have. That's where we are. But ultimately, when you look at, you know, was it a win, was it a loss? It's another loss. Because George Stephanopoulos is talking about it today on national TV. And what they're saying is, yep, those crazy open carry long rifle people down in Texas have caught. And they're saying it's a gun ban, of course. It's not. But they're saying it is. And that's how it's being portrayed. And so we end up on the PR side basically losing this one because it sounds like a gun ban. All right. Thanks, Kyle. Appreciate that. Hey, when we come back, we're going to have the news. This is an incredible giveaway. We're talking a rifle that I'm salivating over. Man. Wait till you hear. 866-TALK-GUN. It'll get you in here. I'm Tom Gresham. This is Gun Talk. The Smith & Wesson bodyguards carry more comfortably, walk more confidently. When it comes to personal protection, nothing beats a bodyguard. Choose the lightweight, compact, and concealable Bodyguard 380 pistol or the Bodyguard 38 revolver, both with a built-in laser sight. The Smith & Wesson Bodyguards. Carry more comfortably. Walk more confidently. One machine. One operator. Each machine is run by a single pair of hands. Hands that spend all day, every day, learning the machine inside and out. We don't believe in quotas. The point is crafting faultless ammunition, no matter how long that takes. It's not quick or easy. Being the best never is. Black Hills Ammunition. It started with our hands. Looking for shooting instruction but don't know where to go? Well, we have it, and you can access hours of training and safety videos, which you can watch on your home computer. On GunTalkTV.com, we have top competitive shooters, the best in self-defense trainers, and folks who have hunted all over the world, helping you learn which gun to buy, how to use it, how to store it safely, and everything else you need to be a safe and competent shooter. 
We also have gun makers showing off their newest rifles, shotguns, and handguns. Doesn't matter if you're a veteran shooter or a complete beginner, you'll find what you need at GunTalkTV.com. You can check it out for free, and you can get full access for only $5.95 a month. That gives you unlimited access to hundreds of videos, and we're adding more all the time. Run the videos over and over to make sure you understand what's being said. Skip around. You're in control. Get smarter. Shoot better. Visit GunTalkTV.com. Great Trigger can make you a better shooter. For over 60 years, Timney Triggers have been trusted by hunters and shooters everywhere. Timney Triggers are proudly made in the USA and come with a lifetime warranty. Installation is easy. Give yourself the Timney Trigger advantage. To see more and order online, go to TimneyTriggers.com. That's T-I-M-N-E-Y Triggers.com. Sign up for our Gun Talk newsletter and join the Truth Squad at www.guntalk.com. Now, back to Gun Talk with Tom Gresham. All right, I'm back with you here. Tom Gresham here. 866-TALK-GUN will get you in here. It's 866-825-5486. Looking for range reports, anything you took out that you shot, that you liked, that you hated. (laughs) Give me an idea of what you've been out of the range with. Now, I mentioned we're going to have this incredible giveaway. I need to bring in our friend Zach Waterman now from from Nosler, the great folks at Nosler. Hey, Zach, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Tom? I am excellent. Uh, we've been shooting some of your fine products and enjoying those a whole bunch. And we're putting together, in fact, we just started airing the, the new seasons of uh, Guns and Gear and Gun Talk TV. So we did a lot of stuff with your, your products. In fact, we actually got to shoot the rifle that we're giving away. So before I steal any more of your thunder, why don't you explain what we're giving away this month? All right, Tom, funny you should uh, say that because I actually got to spend uh, part of Fourth of July uh, shooting this the same type of rifle here. So it's actually uh, the grand prize is the Nosler Model 48 Patriot rifle chambered in the brand new 26 Nosler cartridge uh, with five boxes of Nosler trophy grade ammunition. And our friends from Loophole also kicked in a VX3 scope with Loophole bases and rings. So it's basically the full shooting package. That is awesome. I mean, the, the 26 Nosler, for those who don't know, is like a, a laser beam. It's a 6.5 caliber, 26 caliber. Uh, what's the velocity of that thing with the 129 grain bullet? Uh, in our ammunition, it's loaded up to 3,400 feet per second. So it's your, uh, yeah. your basic 6.5 hot rod. It is absolutely a hot rod and just goes forever, shoots great. And these are one, you might just tell people, that, I know there are still people that don't know that Nosler actually makes rifles. I mean, we're talking about you guys actually make rifles. Tell them about the uh, the M48. Good question. Uh, yeah, the Model 48 rifle, this one in particular, the Patriot rifle is a synthetic stock. Uh, it does have, you know, a hinged foreplate. Nosler's uh, Model 48 custom, or Model 48 action, a uh, 26-inch stainless steel match grade barrel. Um, hand assembled right in our plant in Bend, Oregon. It's all uh, basically handmade. It's it's made in America, <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah. it's a very, very, very good rifle. It's a very nice rifle. It got a great trigger too. It does a very good. Uh, Chris Trigger set at three pounds. Um, rifle Basics makes those for us, and it's really we've had a lot of good feedback. And we actually just came out with this rifle uh, beginning of this year. And we've sold way more than we ever anticipated uh, selling already. So it's been very successful. That, that's what happens when you have a good product at a good price. Now, for those who are wondering, okay, how do I get a hold of this thing? You simply go to our website, guntalk.com, and then put slash win, W-I-N, guntalk.com slash win. And you enter for a chance. And at the end of the month, we do like an electronic uh, pulling the name out of the hat, and somebody's going to win it. But even if you don't win that, you're giving away other stuff throughout the month, right? Exactly. In fact, uh, I'm showing here each week there's going to be first uh, five first prize winners that will all win a $25 e-gift certificate and free shipping to be used at the, the Nosler store, which is uh, www.shop.nosler.com. 
Okay, so it's shop.nosler.com is a yep. website. And so every uh, week we we'll give away five prizes, $25 gift certificate, e-gift certificate, with free shipping to the Nosler store. Correct. Uh, enter there. Let's see. I'm, I'm looking at the fine print. Open to U.S. citizens, 18 years of age or older. And obviously you have to be able to legally own a firearm because this will be shipped to a dealer and you got to go through the background check. Exactly right. So all city, state, federal laws apply for those who get nervous about such things. So (laughs) tell me about the success of the the 26 Nosler. What's been the reaction to this caliber? Um, Actually, we've had, with the rise in popularity of long-range shooting and hunting, uh, a caliber or a cartridge like this has been very, very widely and very popular uh, just in, in that community. And it's really surprising to see just, you know, we had no idea how big and how popular it really is, and it's it's cool to see the guys out there, the real, you know, the professionals that know ballistics mm-hmm. and drop and ballistic coefficients, and you know, they they've taken it to a true science and, and a passion, and it's cool for for them to you know accept a, a cartridge like this um, so so quickly and so uh, proudly. It's it's been really cool for us to see. Well, you know, the numbers don't lie, and ultimately, ballistics is just math, and so yeah. you have this 129-grain, 6.5 bullet that's got this stupidly high ballistic coefficient. I don't have any idea how you guys do that, but it's like, <laughs> I don't know, where is it? it's .5 something. I don't know if it's 5, 2, 5, it's 6. 11. Oh, my gosh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's incredible. Well, yeah, I mean that's so how sleek it is. It's a very high ballistic is. coefficient, but it just uh, it prevents that wind drag. You know that uh, that slows mm-hmm. the bullet down over long distances, and it just kind of helps it keep flying through the air. So, uh, like you said, it's it's all just math, and and we kind of applied best case scenario. Uh, you know what what's the best ballistic coefficient that you can get out of a certain caliber and a certain uh, weight of bullet, and within those parameters, you can maximize your ballistic coefficient. 26 nozzle, and, and, you know, obviously ammo is becoming more and more available, but part of the package is with this package, if you win it, you also get five boxes of ammo. Five boxes of ammo, that's correct. That's actually, uh, right now, that's been the tough thing to get a hold of. Mm-hmm. Uh, here shortly in the next probably, you know, week or two, we're going to have a whole fresh shipment ready to go. So um, that's also exciting for current 26 nozzle owners. There you go. All right, if they want to know more uh, just about the 26 Nosler, they can go to Nosler.com, I'm sure. That's absolutely correct. And from uh, Nosler.com, you can visit the store. You can visit more information on the rifles, bullets, ammunition. Everything's right there on the site. Oh, you know what else you've got there that we never talked about, but I was poking around on the site and I found it. You've got a really good active online forum. We do. Um, yeah, it's, the, gosh, the, we call them the Nosler Army, and these guys are amazing. They have more shooting knowledge with our products than I think anybody in the world. But yeah, um, NoslerForum.com, and, and uh, it's 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 really cool for us to go on there and just get real feedback on our products from guys that are in the field using it every day. Hey, I, honestly, I go over there and I pick up information every time I go because, as you say, these are guys who are doing it all the time. They really know their ballistics, so I'm over there steal. I mean, uh, borrowing ideas all the time. Yeah, no, it's a good, very good resource. Uh, hey, Zach, thank you so much, and uh, thanks to the folks at, at Nozzle. You guys are great. All right, and from uh, sunny central Oregon, we say thank you, and uh, keep up the good work. All right, you take care. Yeah, this is a heck of a giveaway. You go to guntalk.com slash win to enter for a chance to win. We're going to give one away at the end of the month, and there will be other prizes, we said, uh, each week. All right, let's go to the phones here. Uh, line two, Bill's with us out of Liberty, Missouri. Hello, Bill, you're on Gun Talk. Thanks, Tom, for taking my call. Uh, Maybe one of your listeners can tell me if you don't know the answer to this. Uh, Somebody suggested I could use vinegar and water, but uh, a friend of mine, her husband passed away recently, and he was sick for a long time. He didn't uh, oil his guns or anything, and Mm. there's about 20 of them that is really in bad shape. I mean, a lot lot of rust. I mean, more than just surface rust. Okay. So would you would you know something that you could soak the guns in to remove most of it? Well, for if it were just for those who need to know, if it were just surface rust, my recommendation usually is to use four old steel wool and some kind of gun oil, and that will take it off without removing the uh, the finish or the bluing. When you get into deeper rust, you're probably into pitting at this point, 
So it's really affecting the steel. Uh, there's, a, there's a substance called navel jelly that removes rust. You can look there. If you go on the Brownells website, brownells.com, you'll find a lot of things for removing rust. But honestly, the, the thing I'm afraid of is if it's really pitted, you may, if they're worth it, and it's going to be, you know, going to cost some dollars, you may have to have them refinished, which may include polishing. And that's a serious deal. A good polisher can do wonders, and a mediocre polisher can ruin a gun in seconds with a power buffer polisher. So uh, depending on the degree of the rust and how bad the damage is, you might be able to just get, knock it off and use a cold blue or get them someplace and have them reblued, or you may have to have them uh, polished and have some of those pits polished out. Okay. Okay. Well, you're, uh, yeah, you're, thanks you're, you're a lot. In, because... All right. You know what? You're in Liberty, Mo. Um, there are – I'm trying to remember who's there. I seem to remember there's a couple of good gunsmiths in the Kansas City area. You're not that far, are you, from Kansas City? No. No. I, just just north of Kansas City. Right where I was thinking. You might do a little poking around, ask around the gun clubs or something, and say, all right, who's or not just somebody who can mount a scope. Who's a real gunsmith in the area? Take a couple of those guns to a real gunsmith and say, this is what I've got. Because the problem is I, you can't hold it up to the phone and I can't see it. But you take it in all and right. say, this is what they look like. And a good gunsmith's going to say, okay, yeah, this will take care of that. Or, ooh, baby, you got a real problem here. We need to talk. And that's going to be the short route to getting where you need to go is to find out what you need to do on these, okay? Okay. Thanks a lot, Tom. All right. I appreciate that, Bill. I uh, do. Uh, I'm going to get Jim in here real quick on line one. Jim, i got about a minute, so dive in, please. Okay, Tom. Uh, I tried to call last weekend, but as soon as I heard you were giving away bolts, I said forget about it. But anyway, <laughs> I think it was the weekend before you were talking about 1911. Uh-huh. I was driving in my vehicle. And I didn't have good reception, so I couldn't tell if you were up on not happy about smaller size 1911s or smaller cartridge oh, 1911s. Oh, okay. I remember that. Uh, no, no, it's not the cartridges. It's What happens is the 1911 was designed for a 5-inch barrel. As you go shorter on barrels, it becomes more difficult to make them function reliably. The 4 and a half, a four and a quarter, 4-inch barrels generally work pretty well. When you get to the 3-inch barrels... They can really be problematic. I think we were just kind of talking about that. There are some manufacturers who are making their small 1911s run real well now, but it's just something to be aware of. When you go to a really smaller 1911, you really have to watch out for functionality issues. you got to really shoot it, make sure that the ammo works in it that you're using, and just understand they're kind of uh, picky. They're persnickety, if you will. All right, when we come back, we're going to be talking about this guy in Las Vegas. He intervened put himself in the middle of a tough situation, ended up getting killed. Masada Youth's going to talk to us about should you intervene, and if you decide to, what do you need to know? Have you taken your family, friends, and kids shooting lately? You're listening to Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, and we'll be right back. Want to be a guest on the show? Drop us a line at info at guntalk.com. You're listening to Gun Talk with Tom Gresham. All right, time for some serious stuff, and I hope that this is a learning occasion for you because this is, this is something that we need to talk about. About a month ago in Las Vegas, two people bent on murder, assassinated, executed two police officers, then I'm going to give you the short version. We'll give you the long version in just a second. Ran into a Walmart, fired a shot into the air. One of them did. A good guy there named Joseph Wilcox said, I am not going to put up with this. And he inserted himself in and started making a move toward the fellow who had shot the gun in the air. Unfortunately for Joseph Wilcox, this shooter had an accomplice, and she slipped up behind our good guy, Joseph Wilcox, and shot him dead. Those are the bare bones facts of it. Joining me right now to talk about this, explore it, talk about the concept of should you intervene, when should you, how should you, uh, my longtime friend, Masad Ayub. Now, Masad, I just have to tell you, I can't even tell you how many things uh, are on his resume. Uh, he's been handgun editor of Guns and Magazine, American Handgunner. Uh, he received uh, the award of American uh, Handgunner uh, 
author of In the Gravest Extreme, which I think is the best self-defense book ever written, did win the Outstanding American Handgunner of the Year Award, has his own training group. He is a top shooter. He is an author of a number of books. He is a magazine. I mean, Masad, I don't know what all you do in your spare time, but I don't think you have any. But I'm just going to tell everybody <laughs> that when you speak, partner, I listen. Uh, thank you, brother. Uh, I think it was Mark Twain that said, if you love what you do, you never have to work a day in your life. So uh, I believe that. And, and I, didn't even mention, I, I didn't even mention the fact that you are a, a longtime expert witness, been in courtrooms many times on self-defense shooting cases, as well as being a sworn law enforcement officer yourself. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not a boring life. <laughs> No, no. All right. Now, in your classes, you have over the years, you've covered this, you've talked about this, and we, you and I have talked about this. You know, should you get involved? Should you intervene? If you do, what are the criteria? So if you would back us up to Joseph Wilcox, because I know you have actually looked into this the way that you tend to do in this, uh, the Ayub files, where you take a situation and you analyze it. What actually happened here? What do we need to know? Well, basically, looking at it from the perspective he would have had, it is unlikely he could have known that minutes before these two had murdered the two police officers in the nearby pizzeria. What he did know is one man came in, uh, fired at least one shot into the ceiling, screamed some blather to the effect that the revolution has begun, and ordered everyone out. By some accounts, he also threatened to kill anyone who disobeyed. So we have here a man who is obviously not reasonable and prudent and uh, not subject to logical discussion. He is already unleashing deadly force in an area filled with innocent men, women, and children. We, we have a definite danger situation going on here, obviously. Mm-hmm. He told the man he was standing with in line at the, uh, the return counter that he was going to go forward and intervene. Uh, he drew what I believe to be a Glock 19 and was approaching uh, the subject, Jared Miller. When Miller's wife, his accomplice, who had shot one of the officers herself. Did we just lose mass? I'll tell you what. Uh, right. I'm oh, sorry, there we had a little uh, upset All on right. the phone here. Go ahead. All right, go ahead. Continue. Okay. Uh, at that point, she moved in uh, from his side and behind and shot him at very close range. Uh, apparently dropping him instantly. Uh, She then, as she and the husband uh, barricaded near the sporting goods and uh, automotive section in the Walmart, she ambushed the first responding officer and exchanged shots with him. Uh, He was able to move back, radio to other responding officers where they were, and in the course of 15-minute exchange of shots, while there were different accounts, originally it was claimed that she had killed her husband and then herself. Uh, in fact, he was killed by police gunfire. She had been wounded and anchored in position by police gunfire and did finally suicide herself. Okay, so, so that, that, that's, the, that's the facts as we know them. And one of the things that we talk about a lot is that you don't know what's going on when it pops up. And that's true whether you're a concealed carry person or law enforcement officer. That's what makes it so, so terribly difficult, isn't it? Well, the bad news is the bad guys are the actors. We are the reactors, and action always beats reaction. About the only cure for that poison is reactionary gap, getting enough distance that for them to engage you will take them enough time that you can get ahead of the curve. Explain it what was, you mean by I th- that. I think, it was, I think it was instinctive for Mr. Wilcox to approach the threat. Mm-hmm. And you could make a tactical argument for that if you've got hundreds of people who are stampeding past you toward that front exit to get out of the place. Uh, it's going to be pretty hard to engage from a distance without some of those people getting between you and your gun mm-hmm. and him and his gun. None of us has eyes in the back of our head. Uh, the same day he was killed, I was teaching one of my MAG-40 classes in Illinois, and on that particular day had touched on the element I call stages of intervention that goes about four hours of the training. And one of the things that we warn them about is what, what's called in the trade tail gunners. Uh, the primary criminal actor will often beforehand, although in this case she apparently came in with him or just behind him, 
uh, will have staged at least one of their accomplices in there. Their job is to pretend they're just another shopper. And if anyone attempts to interdict the primary member or members of the criminal team, their job is to shoot those people in the back and kill them. And that is exactly what happened four weeks ago today in that Walmart in Las Vegas. All right. Hey, Mass, hold on just a sec. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue talking about this. And actually, what we really want to talk about is, you know, should you get involved? How do you make that determination? And the thing is... It's never the same in any situation or for any one person. 866-TALK-GUN. We're talking with Masada Yub about the Las Vegas shooting and Joseph Wilcox. And unfortunately, some people, some places are saying that, well, he deserved it. He brought it on himself. Tired of overpaying for one concealed carry holster after another that is flimsy, hard to hide, or just plain uncomfortable? At Alien Gear Holsters, less than $30 gets you a professional quality holster that's super stealthy and ultra comfortable. Every Alien Gear Holster is backed by a forever warranty, a 30-day test drive, and free shell trades for life in case you buy a different gun. AlienGearHolsters.com AlienGearHolsters.com Hi, I'm Tom Gresham. For more than 40 years, I've been watching an environmental disaster in my backyard, and it actually impacts all sportsmen in America. I'm talking about the massive loss of land on the Louisiana coastline. The U.S. Geological Survey said the swamps and marshes of coastal Louisiana are among the nation's most fragile and valuable wetlands. That land is disappearing. The Mississippi River Delta hosts as many as 10 million ducks and geese every winter. These are birds which migrate northward through the states, all the way to Canada. The wetlands of the Delta support some of America's best fresh and saltwater fishing. And here's the deal. The wetlands of the Mississippi River Delta are disappearing at a rate of one football field every hour. One football field every hour. Gone. We can reconnect the river with its wetlands and restore the Delta, but we need your help. Please visit VanishingParadise.org. That's VanishingParadise.org. No matter what gun you have, you want it to hit harder, shoot faster and flatter, and be more accurate. You get all that with the ammunition from Double Tap. Double Tap's experts select the best bullets, then load them to higher velocities while keeping safe pressures. Shoot small groups. Shoot farther. Use custom hunting loads in your handgun or rifle. Even fire two projectiles with one shot. DoubleTapAmmo.com. That's DoubleTapAmmo.com. The XDM 3.8 Compact from Springfield Armory is two guns in one. Use as your concealed carry gun with a compact magazine and use the extended magazine for home defense. Carry 13 rounds of 9mm in the compact magazine and a whopping 19 rounds in the extended magazine. To see the entire family of Springfield Armory XDM pistols, go to SpringfieldArmory.com. That's SpringfieldArmory.com. Thanks for being one of the 100 million gun owners in America who support Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. Even if you don't want to be on the air, you can still email Tom with your questions or concerns at tom at guntalk.com. Now, back to Gun Talk. All right, talking with top trainer Masada Yub. If you don't have his books, and there are several of them, I would recommend just buy them. It's as simple as that. Start within the gravest extreme and work your way up to the, the latest on concealed carry. Uh, they're that good. Uh, Mass, one of the things, I don't want to second-guess Joseph Wilcox in this, but I do think we need to take advantage of this in terms of a learning opportunity for us. Is that fair? That's totally fair. If nothing else, <clears throat> he, is, he has left a legacy of caution that will probably save other lives. And I still think I agree with Las Vegas police who said publicly his actions probably did save life that day in Walmart. Okay, uh, those, so, those, two, those two killers had walked in there wearing adult diapers, Tom. That tells really? you they were planning on a very long siege. Mm. They were very heavily armed, and they went toward where the ammunition was in the store. When they start screaming about the revolution has begun, and they have already just cold-bloodedly murdered two law enforcement officers, 
I think it's hard to believe that taking hostages might not have been part of their plan if they had not been disrupted by the courageous actions of Joe Wilcox. How, when you talk to your classes, and you have everything from basic beginners to people who are very advanced, and you work with everybody from people just getting into concealed carry to law enforcement officers, what is the calculus? How do you, how does one determine when or if to get involved in something that doesn't appear to be a direct assault on you? Well, first, you've got to look at the, the balance of competing harms and needs. Can you effectively stop it? Apparently, Mr. Wilcox, believing he was only dealing with one man and had the advantage of surprise, believed that he could. What all of us have to do is look at what, what made this such an act of courage. If you can do it safely, Tom, it's not courage. The very fact that you know you're facing death to keep other people alive is what makes a hero. And I think Joe Wilcox was a hero, and I applaud the Las Vegas Police, Metropolitan Police Department for recognizing that publicly. What you've got to look at is, let, let's say you, you were the guy going into a burning building to rescue someone because you hear the screams and the, the fire trucks haven't arrived yet. You've got to look at maybe a ceiling is going to collapse on you. Maybe you're, you're going to collapse from smoke inhalation. Maybe as you're going up the stairs, the stairs have already been burned badly enough that they're going to collapse out from under your feet. So you take that into consideration and you minimize your, your risks. You move along the, the side of the walls instead of the center of the hallway because if the ceiling does collapse, that's the safest part of the structure. Mm-hmm. You move up the stairs on the edge of the stairs because it's the center of the stairs that are going to collapse first if that's going to happen. You try to stay low underneath the clouds of smoke because that's where there's the most oxygen. Now you transpose that to the situation that Joe Wilcox faced. You've got to have in the back of your mind that, number one, there is the possibility of tail gunners, an an unseen accomplice, Mm -hmm. uh, as was the case here. Another thing you've got to keep in mind is you may not be the only armed good guy in that store. Uh, When I've flown armed aboard airplanes, the first thing that they do is we board separately ahead of everybody else, and we are shown each other's faces. So if anything happens on that plane, we know who pulls mm. the gun is the good guy, not the right. bad guy. We, we okay. can recognize each other. None of us will have that in a situation that erupts in public. Uh, you have you have seen the obvious psycho start screaming and fire into the ceiling. You have drawn your pistol. As you do so, I, who've never seen you in my life, uh, have been standing with my back to the action. I've heard the shot. I turn, and the first thing I see is you, Tom, with a gun in your hand. Right. It's entirely possible that we're going to have a mistaken identity situation. So the first thing, do not draw the gun. This would be one of those situations where you do not draw the gun until you know you're immediately about to use it. Hmm. Once you have neutralized the threat, I would immediately want to be getting that gun back into the holster and be in a non-threatening posture as soon as possible. I don't know who else in that store is an off-duty cop or another concealed carrier, Right. They heard the shot. They came running. They now see me standing over a bleeding corpse with a gun in my hand. Yeah. What conclusion can they jump to? Yeah, n- not a good situation. Well, I'm, I'm, what I'm hearing you say is kind of what we've talked about before, is that in most situations, it this, certainly the safest thing is to not get involved if you're not involved. And yet, <laughs> you know where I'm going, and yet... If you see somebody shooting, I mean, and there are levels. I mean, when you take it to the extreme, you say, okay, I see somebody shooting up a, a bus full of school children. And you go, well, okay. And I'll tell you, and my, I'm going I'm to hold you on just for a little bit longer past this sure. next break. And you know my, my dear wife, Pat, and she, she is lovely and she understands me. And I told her, I said, my plan is to not get involved. This is my plan. But... Understand this, that if it's children involved, I'm going to. And also understand that I do this knowing that there is somewhere between a a, a decent to a high likelihood that I'm not coming home that day. As you said, could be another concealed carry holder, could be the bad guy gets me, could be a responding police officer who, through no malice whatsoever on his or her part, 
sees me, thinks I'm the bad guy, that's the way it goes. But if I can save a kid, that's where I am. 866-TALK-GUN. Talking to Masada Yub, learning a lot. Be right back. You don't have to agree with Tom to participate in the show. Call now with any of your concerns about guns, gun rights, or particular firearms, or suggestions for your shooting activity or personal protection. 1-866-825-5486. Gun Talk is coming right back. Okay, so what do we know, what do we learn from this situation? Joseph Wilcox intervenes in Las Vegas, tries to stop a couple. He doesn't know there's two of them, a madman with a gun, gets himself killed. He gets killed. What do we know? Well, number one, we know that uh, Joseph Wilcox, number one, was a hero. Number two, that being the good guy doesn't mean you're not going to get hurt or killed in these situations. And number three, that it probably everybody was right, and the police officers you've talked to are correct in that. The most prudent move in many cases is to simply get away and be a good witness. We're talking with Masada Yub. Mass, in the couple of minutes we have left, could you talk a little bit about the value of training for all concealed carry people and how it could affect how their decision to get involved or not? Sure. The, tr- the training first will show you what your limitations are. <clears throat> and second, it should give you enough skill and confidence that you can engage at a distance, which is much safer. We've been discussing a tragedy here where the good guys lost. Let's close with some where the good guys won. The Trolley Square Mall in Salt Lake City a few years ago. Suspect walks in, starts murdering people with a shotgun. The first person to ride to the sound of the guns is an off-duty cop who's having dinner with his wife. Now, Tom, he was armed with just a subcompact forty-five, and only the six or seven rounds he had in it. But he engaged from a distance, missed the first shot, but pinned the killer down behind. Now the killer's worried about his own butt, and he's hiding Mm -hmm. from the cop, and he stopped killing people. Every time he leaned out to take a shot, the officer fired around and kept him pinned in position. Another officer arrived in time before he ran out of ammunition to back him up. Then the SWAT team got there, and they extinguished the problem. And from the moment that good man engaged, and he could just as easily have been a trained concealed carry citizen... He stopped the killing. We look back at 1966, the Texas Tower, when that monster was up on the top of that building with rifles, slaughtering more than a dozen people. The 38s and the buckshot-loaded shotguns of the police could not reach him. It was armed citizens who took their hunting rifles out of their cars. One high-power rifle competitor who had a national match, M14, firing from the ground hundreds of yards away, pinned him in position on the tower, and stopped the killing until another armed citizen, Alan Crum, led the police up inside the tower, and the two officers finally killed the suspect on the roof. And we had Gina Assam, the New Life Church in Colorado. She was splendid. She rode to the sound of the guns. She stopped what would have been a mass murder, engaged a man armed with a semi-automatic rifle with her 9mm Beretta, and shot him down like the mad dog that he was. So it does work. It can work. But there are no guarantees. Uh, training really does give you an edge, both in terms of what you can do, but also in knowing what you can do. And we're talking about training beyond your concealed carry class, right? Absolutely. We do not know what training Joe Wilcox had. We did know he was a brave man. We know that he saved life. We try to learn from the lesson and hope that if it, if it ever happens to us, we can do what he did. And having learned those lessons avoid the tragic death that he suffered four weeks ago today. There you go. Masad, tell them how they can find out about your training, please. Sure. It's on the web, masadayoubgroup.com, M-A-S-S-A-D-A-Y-O-O-B, group.com. We teach around the country and have something probably close enough to be in striking distance for any of your listeners. And it is well worthwhile, and I'm here to tell you, it is life-changing. If you're serious about this stuff, you need to go there. Masada Yub Group. Thank you, my friend. I very much appreciate it. Thank you, Tom, and thank all your listeners for their memorialization of the three brave men who died that terrible day four weeks ago. Absolutely. You take care. Masada Yub. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you, good training, good books. Uh, If you get a chance, pick them up. If you get a chance, certainly go do that. 
Maybe this helps you more clearly examine. Do I get involved? I hope so. I hope you will sit and give it some thought. When we come back, we'll be talking about the value to the country in dollars of shooting and hunting. Don't go far. No black helicopters here. Just the facts about gun rights and gun ownership. This is Gun Talk.